All right. Hello, good evening. My name is Heike Dempster, and I'm the Director of Engagement and Outreach at Young Arts. My pronouns are she, her. The Young Arts Campus is situated on the traditional homeland of Native nations, including the Tequesta, the Calusa, the Taino, and today the Mekusuki and the Seminole. We pay our respects to the elders, past, present, and future, and recognize their continued existence and contributions to our community. So first of all, thank you for joining us this evening. This is an info session dedicated to the design discipline at Young Arts. Of course, we want to encourage you all and the artists you know, age 15 to 18 or in grades 10 to 12 to apply. And uh, I have a few housekeeping notes for you all before we get started this evening. So if you want to, if you're concerned with protecting your privacy because this is being recorded and shared thereafter, that you can change your um, screen name to your first name only. If you have any questions, you can raise your hand or use a chat at any time. We will have, uh, we will be monitoring that and get to your answers, uh, get your answers to your questions, of course, as well. And we will be sharing some additional information material. So uh, it's my pleasure to welcome our speakers this evening. We have Nidra Ward, Associate Director of Winner Programs at Young Arts, Design Panel Chair and 2003 Young Arts Winner in Visual Arts and U.S. Presidential Scholar in the Arts, Chad Travieso. And we have Katia Barnett, 2002 Young Arts Winner in Visual Arts and 2003 Young Arts Winner in Design. Uh, Chad Travieso is an artist and designer, as well as the co-founder of Ye2 and Chad. He creates participatory, architectural, and research-based projects that reinforce social bonds in public spaces. His past work has been commissioned by or organized in collaboration with the Architectural League of New York, New York City Department of Transportation, New York City Department of Parks and Recreation, the Cleveland Public Library, and the Children's Museum of Manhattan. His honors include a Young Arts George M. Perez Award and the United States Artist Fellowship in Architecture and Design. He is currently the Louis I. Kahn Visiting Assistant Professor of Architectural Design at Yale School of Architecture. He has also taught at Columbia University's Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation, Carson School of Design, and the Spitzer School of Architecture at City College. He holds a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the Maryland Institute of College of Art and a Master's of Architecture from Yale School of Architecture. Katria Barnett is a Minneapolis-based interdisciplinary artist and designer. She uses design as a tool to reach others and explores various so so societal themes, including emotional states of mind and injustice in our society. Her work spans a variety of mediums, including fiber, printmaking, painting, metals, and clay. Her work has been awarded and exhibited nationally at the 2022 Scholastic National Art Exhibition, the 2023 National Young Arts Week, and the 2023 NCECA Ceramic Conference. Last spring, her high school senior portfolio walked in the Minnesota Fashion Week. This fall, Catrell will be a freshman at Savannah College of Art and Design. She's majoring in fashion with a concentration in fibers. So thank you all for joining us again. I pass it off to chat. Hello, everybody. Um, so happy to be here. Thank you, Heike. Thank you, Young Arts, uh, for inviting me to be uh, part of this info session. And I'm so happy to be here with Catriel. Um, so like Heike said, my name is Chat Travieso. My pronouns are he, him. Um, and I um, am a 2003 visual arts and US presidential scholar in the arts. Um, so I went through the whole Young Arts experience. Uh, I am also like I can mention, uh, design a national selection panelist, um, which basically means that I will be one of many people who will be looking at your portfolio, adjudicating, um, and then during National Young Arts Week, if you are a winner with distinction, uh, you would be invited to participate in National Young Arts Week. I will be there along with the other uh, national panelists uh, acting as mentors. Um, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, I, I went through the experience uh, over 20 years ago, um, which, you know, in many ways, uh, it, was, it was different. Obviously, it was 20 years ago, but in many ways, it's, it's, it's very similar. I think everybody who's gone through the young arts experience uh, can attest to how transformative the experience is. And Catriel, who is a more recent winner, uh, can talk more about that uh, in a bit. But uh, it, from my personal experience, uh, I was a visual arts winner. They didn't have design back then. Um, but I made some really long lasting friendships. Uh, I, you know, it really, I, I came from a, 
uh, visual arts uh, background. I went to an arts high school. Uh, so in many ways, I was surrounded by the arts. Um, but going to National Young Arts Week and meeting people from across the country who are doing art in, in many different ways and thinking differently. I think, you know, a lot of these art schools, sometimes there are certain styles and things that kind of build within the school. But this really expanded my uh, way of thinking and my way of approaching art and design. Um, and, you know, I became part of a family, a part of a, the Young Arts family, um, which, uh, as you will hear, um, is not just about the, the award and National Young Arts Week, but it's something that uh, continues uh, throughout your entire life. Um, I have had the honor of becoming a National Young Arts uh, panelist, but I've also been uh, awarded uh, awards uh, through Young Arts, uh, like the uh, Jorge Perez Award, um, that wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't gotten the Young Arts uh, Award to begin with. Um, so thank you all again for joining us for this design info session. So the, the goal of this evening uh, is to provide support um, to you all, uh, to you all designers, uh, and answer specific questions um, about the 2024 Young Arts Competition and the design application. Uh, we'll go over the key information about the competition and give you a better grasp on the resources available to you at, um, as you take this creative journey. Um, so to begin, I'm just going to give you a bit a quick uh, overview of what Young Arts is. I'm assuming since you all are here, uh, you've probably been on the Young Arts website, you've probably reviewed and, and know a bit about Young Arts. Maybe you know people who've, who've gone through Young Arts. But for those who might not be so familiar, um, Young Arts is uh, one of the only organizations that supports uh, artists across 10 disciplines uh, at all stages of development, beginning with the critical moment when they decide to pursue a life in the arts and continuing throughout their career. Um, the Young Arts experience begins uh, with the application, uh, and artists uh, ages 15 to 18, as I can mention, or grades 10 to 12, are encouraged to apply in the discipline of their choice. Um, so there are two award levels. There's Young Arts Award winners and Young Arts Award winners with distinction. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, the Young Arts uh, winners uh, with distinction are invited to attend Young Arts Week in Miami at Young Arts' uh, uh, campus uh, and in downtown Miami. And uh, all award winners are offered a lifetime of artistic support uh, and ongoing connections with an extraordinarily ro robust network of peers and mentors. Uh, this includes grants, residencies, and funding opportunities. It, re it really is amazing, as well as you know having the opportunity to return to Young Arts Week as as an RA uh, or a discipline coordinator and acting as a mentor in those capacities as well. Um, so about the design uh, arts application. So I'm gonna go through um, the, the design arts application. I have a lot of uh, suggestions um, and, and of course, we are gonna have a lot of time uh, for question and answer. Um, so, you know, just to begin with, we're gonna talk a little bit about what we mean by design. So um, this is the design uh, 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 discipline. Um, you know, obviously design is uh, very uh, close to visual arts. So, um, you know, sometimes there's some kind of blurry area uh, in between. Um, but, you know, just to simplify things, we, we have a uh, requirements docu document that we'll drop in the, in the chat in a bit uh, that you all can, can follow. I'm gonna kind of go through that document and explain a bit of what we mean by design and um, and I think uh, and, and the requirements for the application. And there it is. Um, so design. Um, so the design of what we mean by design is that um, designers, we, the way we're framing it for um, this Young Arts uh, Award is that designers are agents of change. Um, and what we mean by that is that designers uh, reimagine our world by creating new forms, new products, new processes, and new experiences. It's really about innovation. Um, this is really you know, the, the design discipline. We're thinking about innovation, the future, how um, uh, we can use design to really think about new products, new worlds, new, new systems. Um, so the design arts discipline is not illustration, comic book art, character design for like a video game, uh, coding or gaming design. 
That's not to say there isn't innovation in those uh, fields, um, but it, for the, the sake of this application, we are not counting those as design. Um, so what do we mean by design then? Uh, design in, in this context is architectural design. Uh, and what we mean by that is it, the design of buildings, spaces, interiors, landscapes, environments, cities. Um, you know, uh, we're also including set design. Um, product design, so product design or industrial design would include, uh, you know, furniture, uh, toys, uh, vehicle design, um, you know, any kind of product or, or um, that you would think uh, uh, would fall under product design or industrial design. Uh, graphic design, or actually product design, uh, we, we also are thinking about, you know, apps and UX, UI. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about what we mean by that. Um, I'm sure people will have questions. Um, Graphic design uh, includes communication, packaging, book, signage design. Fashion design includes uh, clothing, jewelry, accessories, uh, shoes, um, costume design, which again, uh, we could talk more about what we mean by costume design. Uh, I think set design and costume design, um, there's uh, costume design, uh, would would qualify uh, as design if it's innovative, if it's like really thinking about uh, the the context in which it's being worn, and not necessarily if it's like cosplay or something like that. So just to make that distinction, um, UI UX design, uh, like I mentioned, uh, in, includes user experience design, visual design, apps, websites, product interfaces. Um, but again, UI UX design um, is is. You might have done some coding, but it's not the coding that we would be uh, adjudicating or, or judging. It's more about the, the visual as well as, fun as well as the functional aspects of the UI UX design, right? Um, so, you know, your portfolio is a visual portfolio, uh, first and foremost. Um, and then we also included multi-design, uh, which we recognize that a lot of you might do a little dabble a little bit in a lot of these different things. Um, so we accept uh, portfolios that are completely all product design or all fashion design, but we also accept portfolios that might have some architectural design in it and maybe a couple of pieces that might be, uh, you know, fashion and um, and that's that's also great. So we, we are very uh, uh, happy to have both. Uh, and to, to be clear, we have also in the past gotten uh, applications in which we had uh, 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 applicants send in a portfolio that had uh, majority design, um, but then all of a sudden we had like maybe a couple of pieces or a few pieces that were like a landscape painting or figure drawing. Um, and, and I would say that uh, you wanna keep your portfolio purely designed. Um, the, the figure drawing and the landscape painting, those would fall under visual arts. So um, if, if you are thinking about what else to put in your portfolio, um, stick to design. And if you have visual arts in the portfolio, then that, that actually might hurt uh, your application. Um, I do wanna, again, stress that we, we acknowledge that there's a blurry line between design and art. Uh, I myself call myself an artist and designer. Um, so we understand that in some cases there might be projects that are a bit more conceptual so, for example, uh, uh, a garment that is supposed to represent certain uh, symbols and meanings and have a number of layers of, of, of allegorical meaning, that's, that's completely fine. We, we uh, are very happy to have projects that are very uh, conceptual or that have some kind of uh, social political commentary. Uh, those are great. Um, but, you know, in some cases, if, if the project is, is veering too much into just a kind of uh, non-functional sculpture or something like that, um, then you know it, it might fit into the into the visual arts uh, uh, category. Um, so, but it, you know, if, if it's in the in-between zone, then I think you know it could potentially uh, qualify. And if the if the application is uh, more on the visual arts side of things and it's you know uh, high quality, we might bump it over to visual arts and tell them, hey, you might want to look at that. Um, but just to be clear. This is what we mean by design. So again, uh, you can check out the this document uh, is in the chat. Um, so I'm going to go through um, some of the the requirements of the application, and then, like I said, there will be uh, plenty of time 
uh, for um, questions. Um, so we are asking for people, uh, for applicants to submit a portfolio of 10 individual pages um, or images of at least two projects. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go through a couple of things here. Um, the reason we're using the word pages um, is because uh, we acknowledge that in design, oftentimes you might need to show multiple images in one page. Um, like for example, industrial designers often will have images and maybe some text that's explaining what, and that's, that's completely fine. Um, we, we are open to that, to having composite images, having, um, we are also fine with just one singular image. That's, that's also uh, um, allowed and, and, and great. Um, one thing I will say about composite uh, pages where you have multiple images, I would recommend uh, that you don't have more than three images on a page because oftentimes if you have more than three, uh, remember we're looking at these on a computer screen. Um, so they are, you know, the, the images might be kind of small if you have like 10 images on one page. Um, but we do allow for composite um, uh, images uh, or multiple images on one page. Uh, we are also, again, uh, happy with portfolios that have just one image, or you could have a combination, maybe just one sort of hero shot image, and then the next page uh, is, is a more composite that explains certain elements of, of your, your project. Um, so we're asking for 10 individual pages. This does not mean 10 projects. Um, and, and sometimes, um, and, and that's why, uh, and it also doesn't mean like one project and 10 images of that one project. So that's why we're saying at least two projects. I would say um, uh, that maybe between three to six projects would probably be like the, 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 the sweet spot because um, we have gotten portfolios in the past and you know this is, this is a relatively new thing that we added to at least two projects where we had gotten portfolios in the past where it was just one project and it was a stunning project, but we didn't really get to understand the breadth of that person's uh, abilities or skills. Um, so, you know, it, the, at least two projects, it, it helps us understand one, like the kind of uh, overall um, artistic vision that you might have as a designer. Maybe there's some kind of theme or concept or some kind of thing that that um, is tying these works together. Um, that doesn't necessarily ha always have to be the case, but you know, sometimes it's nice to see multiple projects so we kind of understand like, oh, okay, this person, um, you know, their skill can translate to other projects. Um, so, you know, th that's why we're asking for multiple projects, but that doesn't mean, again, we, we don't expect people to have 10 projects. Um, you know, we, we, we expect that the portfolio would have multiple images of, of you know, individual projects. Um, because again, in design, there's so many elements, right? Design is, is about, uh, oftentimes it's about uh, projects that, that might be functional in some kind of way. So you might want to show what it is, how this thing actually works or moves. Like, let's say you, you are a uh, fashion designer uh, and you're doing like Catriel's work, you will see is really beautiful, um, but it's about the details, right? It's about the materiality of the project. So um, as you will see in Catriel's uh, presentation, um, you know, the, the portfolio includes images of the entire garment as well as details, right? So this is why um, you might wanna include multiple uh, uh, pages per project. Um, and then, um, you know, as we mentioned in, in, the, in this uh, um, uh, sheet, um, we're, we're asking for uh, two of the 10 pages to be preliminary process images or sketches or preliminary models or mock-ups. And what we mean by that is one of the things is that we, we kind of want to understand your ideation uh, a process, right? How you got from point A to point B. How do you, you had an idea and how that idea was realized and thought through um, and, and re, you know, it, how it, it manifested into the project uh, that you're showing us. So this can be as simple as um, sketches in your sketchbook uh, to, you know, sketch models. Uh, let's say you're more of a 3D person. Uh, we used to have it so that it was just hand-drawn sketches, but we realized some people are more 3D people. And maybe you might have like a bunch of uh, models that you made out of chipboard or, you know, uh, 
corrugated cardboard or you know bone core and and that's also fine um you know the, these sketches oftentimes are really beautiful um but they they also show us like you know earlier versions of of you know maybe your your poster design and and how you 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 know the thumbnail sketches that got you to where you you ended up um so we're asking for two pages to be that um we're also this is brand new we're adding the option for a video um a two minute max video this is optional it is not a requirement if you do not have a video it is not gonna is not gonna impact uh your your portfolio uh, negatively um but in some cases we have found that students or sorry that that applicants um uh, needed to show a project in movement or needed to show how a project worked uh it, through video um and uh, so we're adding this because I think it, it, it'll help um, in some cases for some projects, help really help the, the panelists understand the project uh, more. And then finally, we're asking for a one to two page statement that describes or comments on uh, your portfolio and how it relates to you as a designer. Um, so this is an opportunity for you to provide and explain both the technical details in your portfolio as well as the meaning of of the project right so i talked a little bit about this you know we are looking for both applications that show uh technical skill of course but more so or not more so but equally we are interested in the concept the meaning why is this important why is this innovative is this um, trying to uh, uh, respond to a specific need that you have identified or, or building off of an opportunity that you've identified right Mo oftentimes design is very much about being sort of this detective and just kind of understanding you know what's working or not working in the world and how we might be able to respond to that right and you know or is this is this a kind of innovative formal exploration or material exploration right and so this this statement will will add that you know another sort of element that will help us understand how you see this project as being innovative right so it's you know if we get a portfolio where it's just a, a design of a beautifully rendered shoe um where we might be asking ourselves like well what about this shoe how is this shoe kind of pushing um our understanding of shoe design and you know is there some kind of meaning is this kind of making some kind of statement about something or is this some kind of material exploration here is there some kind of formal exploration right um so it's not just about the cool shoe it's it's you know that and more um so uh, that's kind of the the first page of of this um document i think um i i can go in a little bit and, and maybe you know after um Catriel talks about her portfolio we can talk a bit more about um you know a few uh the tips about you know structuring our portfolio um but i do want to maybe leave a little bit of time for questions now because i just threw a lot of information to all of you and uh and i see there might be some questions so yeah if anyone has any questions feel free to drop it in the chat or raise your hand either works um and we will get to your questions um one just came in can we submit more than one portfolio in the design discipline uh no, I, I believe I, Nidra. I think you yeah. might also want to comment on that. I, I, um, not within design. You only can submit one portfolio, um, for design. But you could submit to design, and you could also submit to visual arts. You could submit to other disciplines, but within design, within each discipline, you can only submit one uh, application. Yeah, and just to <laughs> note that that there is a category for multi-design. So let's say that you have a fashion design piece and also a graphic design um, portfolio, you can submit those within those 10 images or pages that, that we do have. So there is a multi-design category. Absolutely, yeah. And to just again, to, to make that clear, um, again, we're asking for 10 page portfolio. Um, and that can be, let's say, uh, it can be all fashion, uh, all 10 pages could be, you know, a collection that you created, um, or it can be, let's say, you know, three pages of that are, you know, some fashion projects that you worked on. A couple of pages can be furniture design, another, you know, it, it, but within those 10, you can have the multi-design, right? But, but yeah, um, hope that's clear. 
um, does the portfolio need to have a cohesive idea or style throughout all of the pieces? That's a great question. And actually, uh, thank you for asking that question because that, that will help me kind of give a, a, a few tips. Um, no, uh, there does not have to be like a cohesive idea or style throughout. However, there, I, I do think that uh, oftentimes portfolios that stand out, even though there might not be a kind of every single piece is part of like one collection or one series or one kind of uh, um, uh, conceptual sort of framework, that there is a kind of um, uh, uh, hmm. there's, a, there's a kind of connection of some sort between them, you know, it, almost you can think of it as like, um, if, if you ever heard of like how artists create, uh, will write an artist statement, right? Like artists are allowed to uh, create works that, you know, span a number of different, you know, mediums and ideas and concepts, but sometimes artists sort of work within a kind of bigger umbrella statement idea. Um, so in some kind of way, like oftentimes the portfolios that stand out um, might have uh, a certain kind of narrative arc to them or, or a certain uh, conceptual, you know, connective tissue between them, if that makes sense. Um, so, you know, the, the, the answer is no, they don't have to have a cohesive style or idea. Um, but I think that statement at the end can help us understand how you see these projects in some kind of way being part of your overall, you know, kind of uh, uh, practice as an artist or designer. Um, so, you know, it, one thing to consider is as, as you're creating your portfolio or, or, or putting together your application, think very um, intentionally and, and purposeful about the order of your um, work samples or, or, or your portfolio pages um, so that it's not just like, oh, this, this is just chronological order or whatever. It, it, it Think about how this is kind of telling us a story or how this is, um, again, you know, if you put this piece and this piece next to each other, it might be kind of very jarring uh, to have these two pieces together. But if you put this piece, this piece, and this piece, and this piece, you'll see how this first piece then connects to that last piece. Even though they have nothing to do with each other, you see how like this piece led to this exploration of this, which led to that exploration of that, that led to this sort of, you know, formal exploration of that, you know? Um, so when you're thinking about the portfolio, I often tell my students that, um, you want to start with like a really, really strong piece, right? That just kind of from the get-go, we're like, wow, this is amazing. And then you you kind of want to also end it with a really strong piece. And, and then the ones in the middle, you know, you, of course, all of you are very talented and I'm sure all the pieces are, are really strong, but maybe some in the middle are, are a bit more kind of experimental or is giving us a bit more of the process. And then maybe somewhere in the middle, you give us another kind of piece that, that really stands out so that there's that kind of arc or that kind of, you know, a uh, uh, flow. Uh, you almost think of it as like a playlist, right? Uh, that that you're thinking about the kind of this song leads to this song leads to that song. In a way, in the portfolio, this kind of image will kind of, you know, in, uh, uh, transition into this image, um, if that makes sense. And that sort of answered the next question, which is: Is there a recommended or required layout for the portfolio? So you. You pretty much answered that question as well. Yeah. Um, for fashion design, when we submit the minimum two projects, is that two garments or two full outfits? Yeah, the great question. Actually, I do want to sort of also answer the layout one because I might be understanding there might be a kind of graphic design question about the layout of the portfolio too in that question. Um, but no, it's it's up to you how um you you lay out your pages uh, again the page can be just one image and that's completely fine and that's great um or it can be a more sort of uh, a designed layout where you have multiple images and, and text and, and that sort of thing that's also fine i would just again will say that if if your layout for the page is multiple images and text um, to make sure that the images aren't too small and that the text isn't too small so that we are able to really appreciate and view um, uh, the, the, the work. Um, the question about fashion design, um, I would say that uh, the two garments, um, I, I, I would say you want at least two full outfits or two kind of, but 
again, I, I would say for especially for fashion, you might want to have at least three, um, you know, outfits. Um, maybe it's part of a collection, or maybe it's just different outfits. Um, so that's not just two, you know, uh, specific pieces uh, like you know, uh, pants and and you know, a, a blouse that you created. It, but it actually feels like you had you're thinking again about like the the, the body of work and 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 um, and yeah. So. And then I see another question here. Yeah. Should we submit more artistic photographs of our fashion pieces or ones with the piece showcased on a mannequin model with a plain background? That's a great question. Um, and the photography mm -hmm. and the, the, the photographs of your projects are, are so important. It really uh, will, um, it, it will it will change the way we see the project uh, oftentimes. Um, we are happy either way. Um, However, you know, sometimes the projects make sense. Like there's, uh, I remember, uh, well, Catriol's portfolio, you'll also see kind of variation of, of both of those where you have uh, models with a kind of more kind of uh, neutral or plain background. Uh, and then you also might have, you know, models within a setting and you, you do a bit of art direction. Um, that either one is, is great. Um, I think the most important thing is really making sure that the photographs um, highlight and and um, really showcase your work the best way possible. Um, so, uh, for example, um, uh, Catriel's year, there was also another uh, winner whose work was very much about um, nature and like uh, it had this almost felt like moss growing on the, the garments and, um, and and they photographed their projects outside at nighttime and it was very, you know, atmospheric and evocative. Um, and, you know, that 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 really caught our attention too. Um, so, you know, it, either one is, is allowed uh, as long as it really showcases the work the best way possible. Great. Uh, I'm going to pause for the chat because I do want to give Katriel a moment to speak. So uh, we will come back to your questions. Absolutely. But pass it off to Katriel. Awesome. Hello, everybody. I am so thrilled to be here today and so honored to talk to you all. Um, my name is Katriel Barnett. My pronouns are she, her, or they, them. And I'm a designer and artist. And for the past four years, I focused on creating wearable sculptures that convey a social message. I was a Young Arts winner in 2022 for visual art and in 2023 for design. And I heard about Young Arts. My Young Arts journey started in 2020. <laughs> um, my mom heard about it actually in high school and she was like, you should apply. So my first freshman year, I rushed my initial application, but I really wanted to submit for design. Um, and I learned a lot from just submitting my initial application for that process. I actually got feedback from the judges, which was amazing. Um, two years later in 2022, I took my time and decided to apply for visual art. I submitted a ceramic portfolio and it placed. And then my senior portfolio, I desperately wanted to go to the Young Arts Week. I was so determined. And so I submitted two portfolios, one in design, which was an eight piece fashion collection. I'll be showing it in a couple of minutes. And then the other was in visual art and it was an eight piece ceramic collection. Um, the one that placed was my senior fashion collection titled Playing With Fire. And that's when I went to Young Arts Week. So my application journey started initially with sketching and designing my entire collection around a concept. And I wrote my artist statement and worked on my collection at the same time, which I definitely would recommend because it was super helpful with writing. Um, I'm personally dyslexic, so the writing process of the application was probably the hardest for me. But I will say I have tons of tips on writing for the portfolio that has truly helped me and just kind of talk about my work and put all these great ideas I have into writing. So it's well communicated and people can understand it. Um, another part of my application that was huge for me was mood boards and tests. So my senior collection was actually basically an entire huge experiment. I really sketched and did little test tiles of each of my pieces and they might make sense once I talk about them in a second. Um, but every single piece I designed but didn't quite know if it initially was going to work out. 
because of I had to test out the medium. Um, so my entire senior collection, I altered all fiber-based materials with fire. So that was kind of my concept. Um, that's what I decided to do. And I selected my pieces intentionally for my senior portfolio because I was influenced by an idea I had in my junior year. So my junior year, I actually made my first piece of my collection, which again, I'll show in a minute. Um, but I wanted to pursue the art of burning fiber materials further. So that was kind of my initial concept. And a lot of the pieces in my portfolio tie into a collective story. So I created them around the same time. So it was pretty easy to determine what pieces went into my portfolio. Um, much of the time that I took, though, for my collection was the evolution of taking one garment piece and then designing bunch of different variations off of that, and it kind of turned into another piece. So a lot of my um, process specifically has been more evolutionary. So I would create an initial sketch and then maybe think about it for two to three weeks and riff off of that idea for several times before you'll see the finalized garments. Um, and if it's possible right now, I would love to share with you guys my portfolio um, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So this was the dress I designed my junior year, um, and it is called the Firestarter dress. The entire dress is made out of a cotton linen. It is all burned, and there is over 500 matches hand sewed onto the garment piece itself. Um, you're more than welcome to go to the next slide. Awesome. Okay, so this piece, um, my brother kindly modeled, and I should say, as far as photographs go, I did not hire for professional photographer. I had my brother's camera um, and literally a gray sheet. And I took photos in photo sessions with my brother and myself because I don't have anybody else to model for me at the moment. So it was very bare bones and very basic. Um, ever since Young Arts, I've gotten a lot more um, opportunity to deal with other people in photography. But I will say these are my actual photos I submitted to my application. So um, I'll show you guys photos later that are newer photos that I've taken or professional photographers have taken, but these were my actual application photos. So this piece is titled Soundproof Screams. There is a curtains that are used. A lot of my materials were unconventional that I played around with, and most of them I had at home already, which is pretty cool. Um, so this is a whole garment. I created the coat in addition to the pants for this look as well. Um, you may go to the next slide. Okay, this piece was actually a huge experiment. I had a bunch of aluminum flashing in my garage, and I was thinking that I could create an entire cage skirt out of this look. Um, and so I tried out a mini model of it. I did not submit it for a photograph, but I could have in my design portfolio, which is kind of neat, um, all your models you can submit, which is really helpful for me because I'm very much a visual person and submitting a model or seeing something it's just very helpful. Um, but this piece, all of the fiber on the top, the entire motif on the front um, was just designed and burned with uh, layers of cotton and then mesh and then some sheet material, which was also cotton as well. Um, the pants I sewed, in addition to um, creating each wooden door individually, it took forever. There are 14 doors on this outfit and I wood burned all of them. I was outside um, in my porch over the summer and just like wood burning each little line. So yeah, this piece was a lot of fun. Definitely playing on more of the um, sculptural realm, but this look was uh, titled Behind Closed Doors. Um, you may go to the next slide. So this piece, I wanted to play around with just kind of the texture you get with burning materials. Um, this piece was titled All Stirred Up, and the material used on what it looks like the corset top is actually all stir sticks. So I burned the stir sticks and then burned um, linen material. I did some research before my portfolio and tried to figure out what materials I could burn with not having too much uh, fumes that would be harmful for the environment, and cotton was one of the big ones. So most of my material used uh, was cotton. And so the, also the motif on the bottom part of the pants that is also burned and then layered with mesh. Um, you may go to the next slide. So this is a process board that I did. Um, this was actually my finished sketch of one of the looks that'll be on the next slide. 
Um, but this one is titled Silent Killer. I went outside in my city and found all these cigarette buds on the trash. And I used rubber gloves and picked them up and put them in a little plastic container, took them home, rearranged them, and photographed them. And then I used a software program my brother has. I think it was Photoshop and created like this bug motif um, that you can see on the lower left corner. Then I turned that into a textile design and had it printed on cotton fabric for a dress. And a huge part of my design portfolio was actually comprising each outfit into a mood board. Um, this was the only mood board I submitted to my application, but every single piece I kind of had a mood board designed specifically for that look. Um, you may go to the next slide. And then this is the fully realized um, version of that whole design board. So you can kind of see the connection, um, how it's printed on the fabric. And then I also went ahead and cut individual straws. So all the black stuff that's on um, the top and then also the back of the garment, you can also see those are uh, straws that I used. So this piece I was trying to deal with uh, carbon emissions in addition to microplastic pollution from cigarettes and straws, which are one of the top pollution um, things that contribute to environment and then also killing animals, which is really sad. Um, you may continue to the next slide. We're getting, getting close. Um, this piece is titled First Flame. There are uh, stir sticks and little bits of record and then also zip ties that I used. And um, the back motif is a screen print and it's hand stitched um, all the hot pink around. Again, I uh, took my photos and for all the ones with myself as a model, I use the self timer on my camera. So a lot of the photos are a little bit, they're not professionally done. They're not anything crazy, but I just utilized my screen and try to fit um, as many detailed shots as I could of what I want the judges to see. Um, you may continue the next slide. This piece is uh, titled Breaking the Record. Um, and this one has a lot of emotional uh, connection to me specifically. Uh, as I mentioned, I struggle and I am dyslexic. And so it's kind of, this is a duality piece. There's another one on the next slide too. Um, but both of them deal with kind of overcoming obstacles in life. And so this piece is a handwoven skirt. Um, a pleather top, and then there's little bits of record and stir sticks that make up like the top sculptural elements and then also the parts on the skirt. And then you can go to the final slide. So this one is also made using record. And um, this one's a little different, it has paper and a couple other elements, but I mostly just used stuff I had at home. We had a lot of old scratched records that my grandma had lying around and I uh, cut them all out with a saw. So that's how you kind of get that monarch butterfly look to them. And um, yeah, this was my final piece for the full collection. Uh, and then I thought, you can go to the next slide. There are some things that um, I've improved since Young Art. So I thought I'd show you some of my work now. So you kind of get a little rundown, which is kind of fun. Um, this piece I actually started the day after I came back from Young Art. So I was so energized because everybody there was so inspiring and I got a lot of great feedback. And so this piece is titled Behind Closed Doors. I also created an entire installation to go behind it. Um, and so this was up at my high school senior exhibition, which was pretty cool. Uh, you may go to the next slide. This one I actually have right behind me. Um, I created this, started it during Young Arts Week and then decided to fully realize it and finish the look over the summer. And this is one that walked in New York Fashion Week. Um, and so it is the Utopia dress, which I'll talk about a little bit more in the future, but you might continue to the next slide. I think I have maybe a couple more. Um, this one is a piece that I created because I got a internship to go uh, after Young Arts. Uh, because of the Young Arts opportunity, I applied to uh, an internship program where I could design my own screen prints and then they would teach me how to screen print. So all of my fabric I created um, off of an own design and this is the carbon footprint dress. Um, and you may continue to the next slide, which I believe this is the last one in the series. Um, and so this is also a part of that installation. So the title of this installation was Collective Action Brings Change. 
Um, so lots of my work will deal with environmental impacts, um, especially in fast fashion and the fashion industry. It's just something I'm really passionate about personally. Um, so this one's entirely reused jean. The uh, look before was entirely reused linen. And um, a lot of the elements that I'll incorporate as well will be like eco-friendly dyes or inks. So I did a lot of research about the inks I used in addition to the materials, which was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, that is my portfolio. Uh, I wanted to share some tips about my application uh, and just like tips I have from applying to Young Arts because I feel like there's so many things um, that can just help you in the future and with your application if you're starting now or if you've already started. Um, I would just say start as early as you can so you don't feel too rushed with the writing or even photographing pieces or anything. Just kind of space out your time so you feel like it is achievable and you have a good goal for what you want to end up having for your final collection. Um, I asked every single person to read my artist statement. I asked teachers, I asked my parents, I had my older brother read my artist statement. Again, writing is really hard for me. I'm dyslexic, so it was a whole process writing my artist statement, but it definitely was worth it. And I would highly recommend taking the time to have other people read your artist statements because they'll even tell you things about your work that maybe you've never thought about before that will kind of change your perspective or maybe you'll gain some new insight. Um, another thing that I was thinking about when <laughs> reviewing how I was doing my application was look back at your ideas. Like even if you have old sketchbooks from years ago, look back at your ideas and say, like, look back and think, how can I improve this? Or is this something I kind of want to riff off now in the future? Um, a lot of my ideas come from mood boards or uh, mind mapping like you kind of saw in that silent killer process board. Um, so then that leads me into mind mapping, <laughs> which is uh, basically putting your idea in the center and then working out from there on um, maybe coming up with synonyms for what you want your work to say or concepts you want to come up with. Um, and then also a couple questions to ask yourself is like, what do I want to make? Like, what's the purpose of what I want to make? Um, why am I making this? What's the like intention of this? Uh, like, what's its purpose? And then what problem does it solve? Or what do I want to communicate? So these are just some things that helped me a lot with writing and it streamlined the process for me when I had to actually talk about why I was making these pieces and why I was creating these looks. Um, another thing is order of images matter. So I ordered all of my collection in a format on a flash drive. I gave it to all of my teachers at school and um, my parents and my brother and had all of them look over it. Even my friends looked over my portfolio probably a good three to four times to tell me about the order and which ones they think should go. Um, just because sometimes the order will affect how you view the entire portfolio. And like Chat mentioned before, if you have one like really strong look at the beginning and really strong look at the end, it really helps you just visualize the entire thing as a storyline. Um, another thing too, is if you take your physical photos, take them outside. Um, all of my photos from my application that I submitted with the gray backdrop were actually taken inside and the lighting was not great. Um, but the new photos that I was taking were outside against like white paper and it helped a ton, I feel like, to be able to show off the details and the intricacy of the work. Um, another thing too is not all your work needs to be fully realized. So many of the Young Arts winners in design, uh, they would submit concept sketches and plans. And then the key with that is just to present, like Chat said, an innovative idea that will highlight the intention of the design uh, for like example features and then your target audience. And then my Young Arts Week experience. So it was my first time in Miami. It was amazing. I was so supported in such a creative environment right away. Um, like I, I landed and I made two friends right off the bat. They were both dancers, which is really cool. Um, and then before Young Arts, 
I went to a art high school and it was the first time at Young Arts Week I actually felt connected to other people my own age that were creative um, just because everybody was so driven. Didn't matter what they were competing in or it didn't matter the discipline. Everybody just was so driven and so kind to I just amazing community. Um, so every day during the Young Arts Week, we had a master class with the judges and guest presenters. And it was very insightful to learn about like the industry. And then I also got to meet a uh, costume designer machine Dazzle, who has been an inspiration for me for years. And he gave us the design challenge that inspired inspired this dress too. Um, and then also the judges during this week provided feedback that was truly helpful to elevate my work. And it has really shaped how I approach my design. Um, so a little bit more about the community. I was sorry, also... Katrill, I just do want to, sorry to cut you off. I'm so yeah. sorry. No, but we fine. only have about eight minutes left. So I do want to make sure that we leave time to answer questions for you. Yeah. And also there were some that came in the chat. So I just want to go back to this. Um, would you recommend putting the process image after each project or having the process images first? Chat, you want to kind of speak on that a little bit? Um, this was an earlier question that came in before. Yeah, um, I think it's up to you how you structure the portfolio. But, you know, just what Katra was saying and what I mentioned earlier, think about that flow. I think in probably most cases you might want to show the, the especially if it's like the first project, you don't want the very first piece in your in your portfolio to be a process image. You want it to be, you know, really strong, realized project or, or a project that feels complete. Um, so it depends, you know, in the context, in some cases like Katriel showed uh, in her portfolio, the process image came before and then the final image that also works depending on how you're structuring the narrative of your portfolio. And then I do just want to touch base on a couple of things. Um, the application is actually housed on a platform called Kaleidoscope this year. And so if you visit our website, um, you will be able to see all the requirements that chat talked about um, and some tips on, on the page from panelists and past winners um, also on there as well. And then it will take you to the application. It is a two-step process this year, meaning you will fill out all of your contact information, um, education, teachers you may want to acknowledge, um, and that is the main application portion. And then if you select design, you would go on to the design application portion. And that is where you would upload all of your uh, images uh, or pages and also complete your um, just title and year created and all of that information, the detail information on each of those pages and also upload your artist statement or your video if you are also submitting a video. So um, once you uh, apply, the application deadline is actually October 13th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. Um, that is a Friday and that's 8.59 p.m. Pacific. So make sure that you uh, complete both the main application and the design application by that deadline. Um, the adjudication process starts immediately after that. And then we have about a month of the different levels, uh, different rounds of adjudications. Um, and then all winners are announced uh, by the end of November. Um, and the, again, like we were sort of, Catriel was getting into, and I will just briefly talk about is that um, it's not just during your winning year, even if you come to Young Arts Week, um, if there are other programming programs happening during your winning year, um, great, but we also have residencies, fellowships, micro grants, um, all kinds of opportunities, even past your winning year. And there is a platform called Young Arts Post that is exclusive to Young Arts winners, and it's where you can go on and collaborate with other, um, other winners from the past and current and also Post opportunities if you um, have opportunities that you want to collaborate with, um, you know, a dancer or a writer or someone else in another discipline or, or category, you can go on there and, and post uh, an opportunity to, to connect with others. Um, and that is, again, exclusive to Young Arts winners. Um, and also, um, you, you know, if you think of any questions after this, um, or if something comes to mind, feel free to um, direct message us on social media, or you can also give us a call or send your questions to apply at youngarts.org uh, via email. 
Um, there was another question that came in. Let me go back to that. Um, is a varied portfolio using multiple types of design preferred versus solely one type of design? I know both are allowed. I was just wondering if as a judge, there is a preference. I, I replied, no preference. I also got a direct question, uh, but I think it's a good one. If I have a fashion design project and then create a brand around it, uh, would that be considered a second project? Uh, yes, uh, potentially. Uh, we have gotten uh, uh, portfolios in which one person did an entire project around the design of a restaurant and they designed the packaging, they designed the 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 menu sort of graphic design, they designed the, the like physical architecture of the space, but it was all kind of one project with elements within the project. So we totally uh, saw that as multiple projects within a kind of umbrella of one project. Um, so I would see that as fashion design as well as graphic design with the branding and the the the, the identity design that you would be doing. Great. So Catriel, is there anything else? I'm sorry I cut you off. If there's anything else you want to talk about in our last four minutes? No worries at all. No, you were totally good. Um, I was just going to say beyond uh, young arts opportunities that have opened up. Um, so there has been so many things that have opened up since going to Young Arts Week and being there with lots of people. Um, for example, all of us in design, we have a specific group chat and we all have actually stayed connected since that week. Um, I have a bunch of friends from Young Arts Week that I've made that has talked about um, contacting me for collaborations. So um, I'm looking in the future to actually working with lots of designers around the country, in addition to dancers and filmmakers, um, which has been really amazing. So lots of collaboration, which I've never seen before or just never really thought about doing with people um, has kind of opened up in the future. So that's been really amazing. Um, what I'm up to now currently is uh, I am working with Minnesota Fashion Week for next year, next summer, and we're gonna be putting on a big fashion show. And um, the organizer from that event, she also was a Young Arts winner. So we connected through Young Arts Post, which was pretty amazing. So there's been lots of connections I made with people that I just wouldn't have seen before, um, but because of Young Arts, they presented themselves and now there's so many opportunities uh, to connect with other people of all ages, which is really amazing. Uh, so yeah, Young Arts Post is really an awesome application. So I would highly recommend applying. Um, yeah, and then this fall, I'm going to Spanish Call of Art and Design. I, because of Young Arts, have been able to get scholarship to go to school an art school that I never thought would be possible. Um, so even school for the next four years is crazy because of Young Arts. So definitely an amazing organization. Highly recommend applying anybody who has, you guys are all here because you wanna apply. Uh, definitely apply for sure. Anyways, it was amazing talking to you all. If you have any questions, post them in the chat. Um, I would love to answer any questions you have for me. Um, or any other questions? Um, so someone just asked if the recording will be sent out. So yes, it will be sent out. It will also be posted to our YouTube um, channel uh, in a couple weeks. So be sure to look out for that. And the other info sessions, if you're interested in other disciplines and categories, um, will also be up uh, on our YouTube channel. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Chat. Thank you, Catrell, for being here and giving such amazing, incredible, helpful information to all of these applicants. Um, we can't wait to see your application. And again, if you think of anything after this uh, info session is over that you have a question about, please feel free to call, DM on social, or email apply at youngarts.org. Thank you all very much, and I hope you have a wonderful night.